Hey guys, still here, and welcome back to Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts. Today we're going to be building some really big, uh, well, not German, but Russian battleships. It's going to be an interesting build. The scenario was sent in by Trenton Blair, and you can send in your own scenario using the link down below in the description. If you want to be um, not so much assured, but have a vastly increased chance of getting your scenario featured, and at the same time supporting me and the channel, you can do that by becoming a naval architect through the Patreon tier. Link to that also down below in the description. The scenario today is Stalin is on the offensive. Stalin finally got his battleship Armada complete. He wants to smash the German fleet in the Baltic Sea. He made three of these Russian monsters, but five German battleships of older design are trying to stop the Russian charge. So I'm going to take a couple of years off of the German Empire. Uh, I'm not going to really put them down to 1930. I think that's too much of a change. 1935 still gives them an opportunity to build some really big ships. Now, the starting range, um, officially, according to the scenario, is 10,000 meters, which I think... It might balance it out. Uh, it might balance it out. I don't really like it because I don't know how these battleships would have approached each other without firing at each other at 10,000 meter range or less. But here we are, so let's just roll with it. 10,000 meter starting range, and we're going to design. Now we're going to go with the modern battleship because that is what the Russians get. They don't get the super battleships, so 69,000 tons is the best that I'm going to be able to use. Um, we're going to go for low range, we're going to go for relatively slow ships, and let's see if I can use the diesels, or is the... Nope, geared turbines is still better. Um, I'm thinking, is it helpful if I use diesel to avoid torpedoes? I think the answer is no. Because diesels can be repaired faster, but that's really their only advantage. These things are more complex, but they accelerate a lot faster. Yeah, we're going to go for geared steam turbines. How fast could you make those? 36 knots? I wonder if that's viable. As you might have detected at this point, I really like my fast ships. Um, I'm the same in World of Warships, which I know is an entirely different game, but I'm still very much more interested in fast ships relative to slow stuff. I just find slow stuff really boring. I will do scenarios of them every now and then, but overall, I tend to favor ships which are just faster. Now, I think I might actually use 36 knots. Sure, I still have to add a bunch of tech. And I still have to add a bunch of turrets and armor. Don't forget armor. That's going to be very important at this range. Um, anti torpedo protection 4, barbette 4. Yeah, let's, uh, let's start with this. And see what sort of guns I can add. You know what I almost never use? 17 inch guns. 17 inch or Mark III, Mark III, Mark III, here, Mark IV, 15s. Hmm. That's 16,875 damage. 24, 33, 45. Let's go for 7. Oh. Okay, fine. I'll go with the bigger barbette. Um, let's go with 17 inch guns. I hope they're going to fit on the bow as they are. Yep, they do fit on the bow. The problem, however, might lie in displacement. Because I'm already looking at a displacement. That's a... Whoop, there we go. We're too heavy. Um, mm -mm -mm -mm. Let's take off some of the speed. There, that just saved me a bunch of tonnage. 30 knots for a battleship of this type, I'd say is already very quick. Now we can add one funnel. Okay. Or we can add two of these. It's 
one enough? No. Is one of these enough? Yes, it is. Okay, good. All right, it's a pretty straightforward battleship, except for having 17-inch guns, which is not a usual caliber, to my knowledge. Uh, I don't know if any ships have ever used these. Maybe. Let's not go with torpedoes today. I'm just going to go full Russian and uh, bring all the guns. So we're going to go with a couple of 8-inch. A couple of 8-inch there. Uh, five inch guns against another battleship are generally not very useful. I don't have any DDs to fight. I don't even think that the eight inch guns are going to be terribly useful. Propellant. What would a Russian go with? I'm not saying historically, but when I think of Russians, I think of these exceptionally masculine dudes really have to make sure that they're the biggest and baddest guy in town. I mean, that's how the movies usually portray them. Um, this is more shell pen, but also shell damage. I don't really care about HE shell damage because I'm probably going to be firing AP anyway at this range. How much pen do they have? 10,000 meters, 30 inches. Right. So if I add another 10%. Yeah. <laughs> 38 inches of penetration. That's too much. I'd rather have more shell damage. This is shell damage, 12%. Leadite 2 is a bit less shell pen, but a hell of a lot more shell damage. That's when you can get those 33,000 damage hits. Yeah, I think I can roll with that. And now we're going to come into a troubled spot. Oh. Uh-huh. Maybe we have more trouble. Because this won't fit. Alright, take off the guns. We're going for dual barrels. I have to save some weight. These things are just too heavy. Especially since I still need to add on armor. 17 inch dual, 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 dual. There we go. That saved me about 3,000 tons, maybe a little more. Which means I can now still add a bunch of armor to these guys. Displacement, perfect. Now, arguably, you could state that maybe belt armor is just not going to cut it. I'm running around with 20 inches of belt armor, which gets a buff of 118%. So that means that I'm looking at 40 inches of armor, belt armor. At 10,000 meters, th not even these guns can pen that. I wonder if this is viable. I really, really wonder if this is viable. <laughs> Let's see. Let's see. Ah, uh, this is the Stalingrad. Whoops. Whoa, 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 whoa. Keep that secondary tower right where it is. Let's go. Let's pick. Now, I hope that the AI built ships, which are potent, which are good battleships, big battleships, worthy. See, these are not small boys. At least they're not boosted dreadnoughts. The guns, however, are fairly small. I am not seeing any deck-mounted torpedo tubes. So overall, if I'm going to be facing torpedo tubes, I'm going to be facing fewer of them. We have the Imperator Alexander II. Impretria... Sorry. Imp... What? Imperatrica Maria and Stalingrad. The enemy is moving away from us towards the northwest. Target the stern or the, the trailing battleship. I hope I can catch that in the thumbnail. The ship's over in the distance. I'm not sure if it's going to come really into view. 
let's see. If you did already spot those things in the comment or in the thumbnail, by all means, let me know in the comment section. Before I forget, by the way, I am approaching 50,000 subscribers. That is a lot of you. And I'm hoping to do so before the month is done. So if you're watching these videos and you notice that you have not yet subscribed, which, I mean, is entirely possible, then please do me a small favor and join the channel. Subscribe. You'll really make my uh, day quite a bit better. So the sooner I get to that 50,000, the sooner I have my goal completed. And then, of course, it's on to the 100k. Now, the Germans are currently on the receiving end, and they are, well, I guess, happy to be there. Because they're not maneuvering. Or at least, not enough. They're still showing broadside, which is something that my Russian warships are perfectly happy to work over. Without a proper identification, I can't tell you what the chance to pen is. But I can tell you that the Germans are hurting. And now the rest of the German fleet's starting to turn. Let's see, you seem properly broadside. We're gonna open up this slugfest a bit more. I'm picking a new target because this guy is more broadside, so more flat side of the ship to fire at, which means fewer chances of ricochet. And with that, better chance to pen. The secondaries, however, can maintain fire on this ship. Oh, actually, I was hoping that this would go. This would happen. He's turning. He's turning to port. Turning to the left for those uninitiated. Which means he's far easier to pen. This guy is not happy either. He's been flooding, I think, twice. And considering how little flooding damage I'm actually seeing, I think that they have maximized their bulkheads. Another flooding hit. But this guy also took a lot of flooding. Yet I'm not seeing it. What? Whoa. Can we go over that again? Oh. Yeah. Yeah, that's not good for your ship. That is not good for your ship. So what happened here? We got hit. And a secondary gun got penetrated. Which then put the ship on fire. And then my rudder got damaged. And then I got a flash fire. And then the whole ship went up. It, yeah. That's really sad. Because the rest of the ship seemed perfectly fine. I think she was at... What? Maybe 90% structural integrity. So we lost a perfectly good battleship. Very quickly. And now it is very much an unfair fight. Because we're looking at a 2 versus 5. I might, however, be able to sink this battleship fairly soon. At least hoping so. And I'm also hoping that I don't get another penetration on a secondary. Which will then detonate more of my ships. Imperatrice Maria currently opening up. Shells are in the air, and the shells have an almost 30% chance to pen, sorry, to hit the target. Identification is 91, and since all of these ships are the same class, I can tell you exactly what we're shooting at for every single ship. You just won't get the names immediately. See, another flooding hit, but I'm just not seeing any flooding. It's not moving. It might be safer to go bow in for a bit. So I'll detach the Stalingrad from the division and have her turn as well. It does mean less firepower, but it also means a bit more safety. Chance to pen? 50%. I'll take that. That's the new target for both the Stalingrad and the Imperatrice. I need to get rid of these things. And I know that I've already uh, severely damaged this battleship, but the Westfalen is just closer. 48% chance to hit her versus the 30-something or 30 near enough that I had there. Fire and flooding on the Westfalen. These battleships are 30 tons heavier than mine. 30 tons. But they have 16-inch guns. And these 16-inch guns at 10,000 meters, which... 
Actually, I need to be looking closer because these are, what, 5,000 meters out? Six. 6,000 meters. That's where they can pen 38 inches of armor. But overall... Bow belt extended. Yeah, the bow belt is fine, but the bow belt extended is fragile. That's why I'm turning bow in. Increased chance to ricochet and hopefully not receive any severe damage to the guns. Speaking of... Is that gun out of commission? That'd be bad news. Really bad news, in fact. Yep, we have a turret out of commission. The B turret on the Imperatrice is out of commission. These things have 16 inches of belt armor, plus 108. 21.9 inches on the turret. And they do come with torpedoes. Where? Port and starboard. Sorry, bow and stern. Not port and starboard. Bow and stern. Yeah. Um, how am... Oh, ammo dead. Good. How am I going to sink these guys? Because this is about 600,000 tons of uh, German battleships. Versus 140,000 tons, or 138,000 tons of German battleships. So these guys are a bit heavier than I am. <laughs> and my guns are only one inch bigger. They can bring to bear a lot of them, and I cannot. Don't try to hit the Westfalen because she's angled. Target the Margraf again. Seems like these guys are all perfectly healthy as well. Alright, can I still outplay these? Uh, slow down to nothing. Just maintain bound of a position. The only one that could be a problem is the Hagen. As she's maneuvering side, or to the side of my ship. Uh oh. Did you get an ammo dead? What was that? Probet destroyed, main gun destroyed. Whoa! This is what happens when you don't put enough armor on the turret. You start losing them. So, effectively, I have four 17 inch guns operational on these ships. Only the bow turrets on the Imperatrice and only the... Sorry, the, only the singular bow turret on the Imperatrice and only the singular bow turret on the, on the Stalingrad. So... Much to my dismay, I'm going to have to start turning. Hoping to get the stern turrets to bear. You know what? We're going to turn the other way. Friedrich der Große coming in. 16-inch guns at the ready. 8-inch secondaries, 7-inch secondaries, 3-inch case, sorry, 3-inch secondaries and 2-inch. Not particularly scared of the 2-inch, because they've only done 7 damage out of uh, 350 hits. Get their stern turrets turning fast enough. Markov is turning very quickly. I can already see the comment section lighting me up. For making this turn um, they're sending to be set for both you could definitely argue no 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 you should not be turning in this situation because you simply cannot survive the broadsides of all of these ships and you'd be right but what I can also not survive is staying bow in and firing my 17 inch guns uh, every 30 45 seconds and hoping to outpower six German battleships which carry no fewer than, what is that, 12 barrels per ship. So in this case, I decided to take the risky route, which means doing as much damage as possible with the guns that I still have available. Which are dwindling in number, I can tell you that. Because the stern turret on the Imperatrice also got knocked out. Which is bad. Stern turret on Stalingrad seems operational. Decent damage, but Markgraf is still operational. Oh, this is gonna hurt. 
A lot. And here I was thinking that I could just take on a 3 versus 5. Especially since... Damn it. Especially since I have... Um, usually more... More powerful ships. Maybe not. Uh, usually more powerful ships. Because the AI sometimes just goes with advanced dreadnoughts. With a displacement of somewhere between 30 and 50,000 tons. And sometimes they go with ships which are like that. 102,000 tons of Russian... Sorry, German battleship. So... What we're looking at right now is a desperate last fight of the Imperatrice Maria. 8,000 damage done by the Germans versus 2,300 done by the Russians. Had I had torpedo tubes, I think it wouldn't have mattered much. Sure, I might have done quite a number on them, but with maximum bulkheads and any torpedo protection 4, it probably wouldn't matter much. Now, if only the German battleships and World of Warships worked like this. Because they are... Well, they're not so much not a match for the Russians, but generally the Russian ships are just plainly better. I really don't see myself getting out of this one. It's just... Oof. Waiting until I lose all the turrets. Because I just lost the third. I'm starting to flood. <laughs> these, these Germans are really not taking any prisoners. I've not sunk a single ship, have I? Nope, they're all still here. The Germans have ramped up to 12,000 damage versus my 2,000. 2,300. Not good. Not good at all. Alright, we are going for a different solution. Let's rebuild. Because don't worry, this video is not done yet. We are going to go for a battleship that is fairly light on heavy armor, or on uh, main armament. And when I say fairly light, I mean almost impotent. One 9-inch gun barrel. And I also require one on the stern. These, these secondaries are useless, since I can't pen anything with them anyway. Oh, sorry, I'm going to have to put these on a barbette. Uh, can be a standard... Tall superimposed. Yes. We're going to try a completely different tactic. This is levels of armament, which is almost unworthy for a cruiser, let alone a battleship. Mm -hmm. Fast torpedoes, undodgeable. And so it begins. Or should I say, and so it ends. Because if I'm now facing German battleships, which happen to have a metric ton of weapon systems as secondaries, it's going to be over really fucking quickly. Because then all of these torpedo tubes are going to get blown off very fast. Leading to the destruction of most of the ship. What I can do is try to make them fairly tanky. And when I say fairly tanky, I mean in the region of 30 inches of armor. No, okay, 28. Nope. Too much. 27. Nope, still too much. Underwater tubes? Oh, yes. They're less likely to get destroyed. 26. 25. No, not 2. 25. Nope. 24. I'll get there some sometime. Bit less on the turret, because if I lose a 9-inch turret, I won't be crying about that. There we go. Exactly at the displacement level. Torpedo tubes? Yes. <laughs> How many do you want? Yes. I want all of them. I have 40 times 5 tubes per side. So, this means that I will send out 200 torpedoes 
every single time. And if that's not Ruskin, Russian masculinity, I don't know what is. Let's go. Some parts are badly placed. No, they're not. Pseudo tubes are exactly where they're supposed to be. Stop. I don't want these torpedo tubes to launch prematurely. We have Arkhangel Gavril, Stalingrad, and Imperator Nikolai I. Oh, look at these things. How many torpedo tubes do you want? Yes. I will have all of them. Now, all my Russian ships, listen up. We are going to start to disperse. You're going to turn in there. You're going to turn in there. And that means that you're singular and you're also going to turn in. We are going to teach these Germans a lesson. With 200 torpedo tubes. To a range of only 10 kilometers. Damage to the torpedoes, you don't say. <laughs> oh, this is nuts. I know the history guy, history guy gaming has already done something like this. Just trying to fit as many torpedo tubes as possible. Jeez, the structural integrity is dropping quick. What the hell happened? Oh, you're hitting my torpedoes. Stern deck? Oh. You're going through the deck armor. You mean one of the spots where I don't have any kind of torpedo or um, armor. Fine. We can sacrifice the Arkhangel. If I can still land a lot of torpedoes on these Germans. Arkhangel is reduced to 50%. Stalingrad, hard to starboard. Imperator, hard to port. Gavril, hard to starboard. Identification, 88%. Do you still have torpedo tubes? Uh, some. Some. Not all. But potentially enough. These things travel at 63 knots. And I think that they'll be hard to dodge by the German ships. The German ships, once again, 100,000 plus tons. 104,000 here. Uh, they do have sonar 3. They have a turning circle, however, of 900 meters. So even though they might detect the torpedoes, they will be powerless to do anything about them. Or at least, that is the uh, assertion, or rather the hope, that I'm operating under. Look at that beauty. A migrating swarm of torpedoes. The Rhineland, however, has already detected them. Uh, they'd be hard pressed not to. Because there are a few. Or maybe more than a few. Arkhangel seems to be out of the fight for now. Oh, you're still not done launching your torps. I'm sorry. I'm not sure why the Stalingrad won't turn. <laughs> right. So, you're sitting here on the Rhineland. You're going, Captain. <laughs> torpedo <laughs> torpedoes on starboard. How many? Um, I stopped counting after 20, sir. I stopped counting at 20. Yeah, this is going to be fun. <laughs> These ships will sink faster than you can say Ruskin mascul Russian masculinity. Because here we go. That's 24 inches slamming into the Rhineland. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. We're not done. 9. 9, 9, 9, 9, 9. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. 16, I think we're at. They've been hit by 16 torpedoes, and they just don't give a shit. I want a refund on these torpedoes. Eager. How would you like to be subjected to the same kind of a treatment? 
And where is Stalingrad? Stalingrad, target, Koenig, torpedoes when ready. Torpedoes away, sir. Holy shit, son. It's gonna get massive. Look at that. Look. <laughs> I know that I can really, really fight this game at times. I can be really pissed off with this game, but this makes it all worth it. Are you dead yet? No, you're not. Okay. Look at this. This is fucking glorious. Ruskin... Ruskin? Ruski. Ruski masculinity. Incoming. Here we go. How many torpedoes can I hit? <laughs> 54 torpedoes. Koenig goes... Meh. Is that all you got? Meh. The same thing is about to happen to the Eger. 24 inch torpedoes and these German ships barely shit barely give a shit. Look at that. Nope. Don't care. I see your torpedoes and I raise you one torpedo belt. And it's gonna stop absolutely everything. This guy got hit by 50 plus torpedoes. They're, m well, they're mildly flooding. Well, well, well. They only have anti-flood one and anti-torpedo five. What the hell? So could you please bloody flood, Koenig? I'm still hearing more torpedoes. Landing on Aegir. Not that they care. And here I thought I had a good plan. Here I thought, you know what? I'm just gonna launch a whole spread of torpedoes from these guys and they're gonna sink very, very quickly. And the Germans go, nah. 50 torpedoes. Nah. Still, that huge spread was worth it. I wonder how many I have left on the starboard side. Oh, quite a few. <laughs> Enough. Hey, Koenig. Koenig seems to be listening to starboard only slightly. Koenig, are you ready for dessert? Because dessert is coming in. Unfortunately, I'm not sure if the Stalingrad is going to be around after serving dessert. Please launch the torpedoes. Yes. And you think the Kitakami in World of Warships is impressive? No, 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 no. You should try the Russian Stalingrad class. Battleship. Best torpedo boat. You've been hit by 130 torpedoes and you don't care? These are 24 inch, yes? Yes. Okay. Oh, sorry, we still had a few uh, late arrivals. What the hell? Yes, there we go. We finally sunk one ship. Rhineland is down to half. Eger is also down to half. Scharnhorst is full. Alright, cue the drills theme, because here comes the Archangel Gabriel. I'm not sure if she has any torpedo launchers left, but the starboard side... Well, it looks a bit toast. It looks a bit toast. 
Maintain course. The problem is, I think I will not be able to sink this thing using torpedoes. Because I have seen that I can land 130 torpedoes against a single warship, and they just survive. Another spread. Here we go. That's 10. That's another 10. That's 35 torpedoes total. 45, 50, 60, 70, 80. Oh, sorry, we're not done yet. That was 85 torpedo, or 84 torpedoes. Nah. And change. And they just don't care. Could you please respect the torpedo armament on the Russian ships? Please. I worked hard on that. My torpedo tubes are feeling a little ignored. It's almost like you don't care. Eager. We're gonna make you care, Eager. Damn it. Look at that. Torpedo landed. Decent salvo on Scharnhorst. And here comes the storm that's gonna hit the Eager. This is fine. This is fine. The ship got hit by another 90 torpedoes or change, and not a worry in the world. I'd say after one or two torpedo hits, you're already in a pretty bad spot. If you're getting hit by three torpedoes, your ship's probably gone. If you're getting hit by five torpedoes, there's probably not a ship left at all. If you're getting hit by 90 torpedoes and you're a German warship? Well, we call that Tuesday. Anyway, this video is going up on a Monday. Um, if you think you're having a bad day, I guess you've never been hit by 90 torpedoes. Or at least not today, probably. And if you have been hit by 90 torpedoes today, then I, uh, I think you're having a pretty rough time. Interestingly, it seems like my Russian warships are surviving for a fairly respectable time. Longer than the ones that were armed with the 17-inch guns. Interestingly. Could you stop destroying my torpedo tubes? I need those. It's the main armament of the ship. Oh, no. No, that's never gonna hit. Really. You call that a respectable, normal angle for a ship? This thing stopped flooding at 0.4%. The Aegir. This is turning into such a meme video. Ceasefire. I only want to launch when I know exactly where the ships are and what the angle is. Rhineland, losing all main engines and rudder. I want you to chase down the Rhineland. I want you to chase down the Scharnhorst. And ideally I'd sink the Aegir, but it's probably going to take a bit more than just a 9-inch gun. Oh, I'm sorry, the 9-inch <laughs> is almost out of ammo. <laughs> oh no. Yeah, the 9-inch gun's out of ammo. But, in positive news, we have 400 torpedoes left. Hey, Rhineland. Comrade. How would you like to get hit by torpedoes? Just many of them. That is, if I still have a, a functional launch. I think I might have some. Here we go. This should finish off the Rhineland, right? Rhineland has detected torpedoes. Yeah, you don't say. That was another 60. Sink! Damn you. Thank you. 
That was nuts. Positively nuts. Hey, Scharnhorst. Sod off. <laughs> Alright, we're going to continue on. And torpedo the Helgoland. Scharnhorst is already down quite a lot. Catch. Did that even impact the structural integrity at all? Or didn't it? What the fuck was that? Uh, and we need you here as well, Arcango. Oh crap, I cannot make that turn in time. Only launch when you think you can actually hit something. Do I still have anything functioning on the bow? Um, one or two. And when I say one or two, I mean one or two quadruples. So I still have a few left. Now, Stalingrad. How many are actually operational? Helgoland. Oh, and the, uh, yes, the Aegir. And the one at point four. Fucker. I'll get you. I'm gonna get you. Seriously, guys. German engineering. 90 torpedoes, and the ship just refuses to sink. We still have 275 torpedoes ready. Well, not ready. Left. Oh, Eger's gone. Really, what got you? Heavy flooding. Nah, <laughs> you don't say. Torpedo hits. <laughs> okay. Finally. So that leaves... Let's see, Rhineland's dead. Scharnhorst's dead. Eger is dead. So we are just working over the Helgoland. Which is what the Archangel Gavril is trying to do. Uh, could all German warships, sorry, Russian warships, please converge on this location? I'm quite sure that this is not what Trenton Blair had in mind when he sent in his scenario, but I'm having a ton of fun with it. Although, it is slightly incredible that these ships survived 90 torpedoes. I know the Germans had some good engineering, but their torpedo belts are out of this world. It's like they just go, shields up, and your 90 torpedoes just harmlessly bounce off the side of the ship. Mm -hmm. Your 16-inch shells have no power here. Because there's nothing left of the Archangel to damage. It does not look, however, like the other ships are going to be here quick. Stalingrad reduced to 11 knots. Imperator. Oh, the Imperator can get her pretty quick at 22. I like that. Turn port. More torpedo tube getting blown up one after the other. Looking like this stern quadrant is still fairly, fairly healthy. They just need a load. Helgoland. Are you ready? How would you like to be administered your medicine? Here it comes. Sink, damn it! 60 torpedoes! 5,772 damage. Look at this, right? I have done 60,000 damage. 59,000 of which came out of torpedoes. They have done 11,000 damage. The ship is still here. The Helgoland. Thank you. Pfft. 
Maybe the amount of damage that torpedoes do needs a bit of work. Anyway, um, that was a very interesting scenario. If you have one of your own, send it in. I hope you had fun with this one. And I hope you were laughing at your PC when I was landing 60 to 92 torpedoes on a single ship and it didn't sink. Um, I'll ask the devs to change this because this is something that needs to be adjusted. A ship can take a few torpedoes, sure, but 90 is a bit on the high end. Especially since they need to be administered another dose of 70 to 90 torpedoes before they actually sink. But maybe it's just German engineering. Maybe it's just German torpedo belts. I don't know. Anyway, that'll be all for this video. I hope you had fun, and I'll see you, catch you guys tomorrow for Taskmaster Tuesday.